Hi everybody, this is Steve and thanks for joining this webinar this afternoon. This is the second uh, webinar that we've done on the Unity Contact Centre. And uh, building on the first one, we're going to sort of dive into a little bit more detail actually on how you can construct a queue. Um, and it's going to be a web chat in this example. So the plan is, is that we're going to sort of walk you through really quickly how you can sort of um, build the messages, the visuals, how the widget looks, all that kind of stuff. We're going to build basically a typical web chat for a customer that they'll have on their website that you can uh, sell to them. And uh, then we're going to show you how that works with uh, the Unity apps and um, also we're going to use that uh, as the platform to take questions at the end. So just to um, pick up really from where we, we left off last time, um, not to revisit everything but I just see there's a lot of different, uh, there's a different audience on this call. So when we're talking about Unity Contact Center, what are we talking about? So what we've got now is we've got two media streams available today. That is web chat and web callback. So that these can be um, configured by the customer and put onto the website. That's Unity Contact Center now. Looking forward this side of Christmas, we have another two media streams coming up and that's email, which a lot of people are very keen on getting their hands on. The email is nearly ready. Uh, and also we have Twitter integration coming up. So all of these media streams, and there will be more downstream, they all work the same way in the Unity interface, uh, and that Unity sort of blends all of these into a sort of common experience for the, for the user. So whatever type of media they get coming in, it's a phone call on Broadsoft, it's a web chat, it's all in the same interface, and it's all managed logically together. Okay, so there's a couple of particular things that we want to touch on, and this is the purpose of this call today, is that um, we've tried to have a, an optimized SMB experience. Now that, there's a couple of things that that sort of um, touches on and one of them is of course the features um, where we have um, a feature called presence based scripting is the best example and so what that means is that Unity can dynamically uh, remove or change the um, chat widget or the callback widget that's on the website. So the best case, the best example is that uh, if there's no agents available then we can either remove the uh, chat altogether uh, or we can change the message to say we've just popped out or we're not here, would you like to leave a message, all that kind of stuff. So very much an SMB uh, type feature designed for help desks that don't have um, you know, hundreds of agents. Uh, and the second point, and really the, what the purpose of this call today, is to talk about the simplicity of setup and the speed of setup. Um, this is important, obviously, for SMB customers. You know, they don't have a lot of um, in-house uh, web developers necessarily, all that kind of stuff. So, how can they get this thing live, the web chat live? How can they make changes to the way it looks? How can they take it online, offline, all that kind of stuff? That's the purpose of this call, and we're going to jump into it now. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, this is uh, this is Unity Agent, um, and in this example here. Um, there's a Broadsoft call center, but we're looking at this Kakabo Systems um, queue here. So just to talk about, before I go and build this web chat, just to talk about queues and media streams for a moment um, and, and their relationship. So the media stream is the web chat or the email or the Twitter or any of that kind of stuff. These all get delivered into this um, Unity interface here. So in the same way that I've got this call up now to this bridge. Okay, so that's all incoming media. I can um, have these media streams grouped within a queue. So I've got a Kakapo Systems queue here. So the logic where that is, is that the customer could have a support queue, and then they could have um, support at customer.com email, they could have um, some web chat on their support page, um, etc. So they could actually have multiple Unity contacts into media streams, but they could group it logically within their business, whatever's appropriate for them. So in this example, we're just going to stick with this Kakapo Systems uh, queue and I'm going to make a new web chat um, in that queue. Let's do it. Everything gets constructed in the uh, in the Unity portal. I've already got um, I've already got a queue set up here, uh, which is Kakapo Systems. So there's a couple of very slight shortcuts, if you like, that steps that you will have to do before you can get to where I am now. One of them is to build a queue. Um, I'll show you uh, this queue in a moment. It's, it's, it's seconds to build a queue. And the other thing you need to do is we're in the Contact Center tab in the Unity portal. Uh, you have to assign a Unity Contact Center agent license to a user, to at least one user, to be able to see this tab. Again, it's no different than any other Unity license. It's literally seconds and it's, you know, it can get um, 
an embedded process within your existing sort of provisioning system. So, um, so it's a couple of things to mention there. I'm a user, I have already given myself a contact center agent standard license basically. So let's jump on and uh, build one. Here we go, add a media stream. So the name, this is the name that the customer is going to see on the web chat. So let's just say um, webinar, webinar chat, let's call it that. Okay, what is it? It's a web chat. Can conversations be transferred? So can I send it to other people that are in, uh, assigned to this media stream? Yes. Can I escalate it to a supervisor? Yep, sounds good. Time zone, uh, office profiles. So what I'm going to do, you can have multiple office profiles. I'm just going to choose office hours here. Use last agent routing, okay? No, I'm not going to turn that on. It's not great for demo sometimes because uh, if one of my colleagues picks up a chat, I can't get it back again. That does exactly what it says. So if, if a visitor comes to the website, starts a chat a week after they last started a chat, then if this agent is available and online, it's going to route the call straight back to them, route the chat, sorry, straight back to them. Okay, identifier. So this is... Um, uh, um, this is a unique identifier, the customer doesn't see this, so we can just sort of skip by that pretty quick. So some required fields, these are optional as you can see. Is the visitor required to put in the name, email, etc. before they can start a chat? I'm going to say yes in this example because a couple of reasons. Uh, this is of course good for data capture because uh, in our reporting all of this is accessible. Uh, and also it means that I can do a, uh, I can do a look up. Uh, in uh, Salesforce, which is what I'm using. Is, a, uh, is the visitor allowed to have attachments? Can't see why not. Um, conversation can be rated. So after they finish the web chat, do we want to have a quick um, five-star rating, one to five stars? How was, the, um, how was the web chat for the visitor? Let's turn that on. Um, 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 hi. This is, once somebody's clicked in and put in their name and number, what message are they going to see? They're going to see that. Um, so what happens if some if it's unstaffed? So um, you, you shouldn't customers really the visitors sorry shouldn't really be seeing this because uh, what happens if they start a chat and there's actually nobody there to take it? Um, sorry, we missed you a missed message. So what happens if the chat has been started and the risk agent's available and it's uh, rung round and it's it's gone through the overflow and everything else? What happens? They get a message saying, sorry, we, we missed you. In both cases, those details are saved in the system and sent to an email address that we put in here, which we're not going to. Um, unstaffed message, nobody should be seeing that because what we can do, um, and again, this is a presence-based scripting, is we can only show the chat during business hours, as you can see, or only show during business hours when an agent has joined. So in other words, they shouldn't be getting the uh, unstaffed message. I'm just going to leave this never show just for this demo. Hide the web chat when conversation is completed, uh, so it does exactly what it says. When the visitor has um, closed the chat or the agent's closed the chat, it, it gets it's taken away from the page. Uh, and equally, if they wanted, to, if the visitor um, clicks to close it, then it's not going to pop up, pop back up again. Okay, so now we're into the details of actually how does the web chat look on the page. Um, I'm going to leave it for this color, but. Um, what we're going to do is we can just change. Uh, we can change the way it looks. We can have. Um, how can we help today? Um, we can have a bubble design here. I think what we'll do is we'll just take this one for argument's sake, and I'm going to choose this avatar here of uh, this lady. Um, so when it's when the um, chat is answered, are we going to take the queue name or are we going to take the stream name? Uh, that's not too important for the purpose of this demo. So let's just go down here and have the start text. Hi, how can we help? Let's change that to, can I help you? There we go, can I help you? Okay, and then uh, the button text, which says live chat at the moment. Um, let's make it say chat now. It's gonna be in the bottom right. Let's have it coming in after two seconds. Let's add it. Okay, so there we go, we've just added it. The webinar here. Right, so I know this has been more than three minutes, but I'm sort of stepping through this just to show you how to get this built. And we're one more step, which is the routing phase, I, which agents are going to get this web chat. And then we're going to paste it live on the website and start taking some chats. So uh, let's just jump in here and add some agents. I'm going to add a, so I'm going to add a phase. So this is a routing phase. So it's just basically what agents get the call. And then of course I could have a second phase, a third phase, and it can be overflowing and cascading and all that kind of stuff. Let's just keep it really simple. 
So I'm just going to call it phase one to keep it simple. Entrance message. So this is going to be played to the visitor on the chat when we're trying to find an agent. Um, we're finding an agent for you now. There we go. So the uh, routing policy is um, similar, of course, to Broadworks. Um, longest idle, simultaneous, etc. If I do have longest idle, of course, I, I have um, you know bounce duration, etc. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to make it uh, simultaneous ring. Phase duration. Um, so this is the um, the timer before it will overflow to the next phase. If there is a next phase, if there's not a next phase, a next phase, sorry, is going to play the missed message we configured just a moment ago. Um, but I'm going to just going to do that for the moment. And I think what I'll do is I'll just get Steve. That's me. Um, and Jen. I'm going to add those two in. I'm going to add that phase. Okay, so now we've built how it looks. Uh, we've added two people into it. Now how do we get that on the website? Go back into where we were, profile. Can I help you? That's what we want. Go to test stream. What you can do on this page is you can actually test. Um, I could run Unity up and I could, um, I could actually make calls, uh, chat that is, practice the chat before I put it live, but I'm not going to bother doing that, I'm just going to put it live straight away. This is this here is the JavaScript that has to get copied and pasted onto every page that this customer wants this web chat that we've just configured to be on. Um, so this is a one step process. If they wanted to change any of the colors or anything or the way it looks or take it offline, they don't need to do anything in the website. It's, it's literally a copy and paste deployment. Let's do that now. Um, and if I go into uh, ooh. Yep. Uh, sorry, it's, uh, we're just going to plug, plug this in for you now. Oh, pressure, pressure. So yeah, I mean, this we're using WordPress in this example, but whatever you know, CMS, whatever your customer is using stick it in the footer so I think the logic with that with us is that it goes on every page because the footer is in every page and in, uh, in a perfect world what we're going to see is well there we go it's live can I help you so what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to join let me just join this queue now I will need to restart unity which might take a second so let's just restart I'm just going to do a quick test call now and then what I'll do is I'll just show you how you can configure or hide or play around with the way this looks on the customer site. So let's just uh, see, firstly I'm joined to this um, queue, uh, I've got to go available or I won't be getting it. So now if I just go into chat now, um, Steve, 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 and I'll put my number in. Okay, chat now. This is the message we put in before. Start a chat, hi, so here we go. This is the agent experience. So I'm taking a chat that's come in. It's from John Daniels, it's done a Salesforce lookup. Salesforce, uh, Microsoft Dynamics integration uh, for, for um, doing a lookup and also journaling into the CRM. That's all delivered to standard. There's no add-ons required to deliver that. Um, this has been ringing for 18 seconds. It's on simultaneous ring. If it rings for 200 seconds, it will disappear. But at the moment, we're gonna pick it up. So now I'm going to answer this. And again, because we uh, had the mandatory fields, which is the, was which was the name, um, and it's, it's taken this from Salesforce, um, and the email address and the phone number, it means I can sort of escalate this straight away with one click to a voice call using my Rawlsoft extension. But here we go. I there. As you can see, it all works. And so that literally, this is uh, this is a web chat we've just built this moment. Can replies. Now, these canned replies have been taken from the queue, from the Kakapo Systems queue. You can also configure these at the media stream. So I, I could have some specific for this new web chat we've built, but basically it's as simple as that. Um, and I can also do the same. for. I can have um, uh, resources, so links, brochures, whatever that, whatever that might be. Uh, I can configure that, that at, at the higher level, the parent level of the queue, or I can configure them locally at this media stream. Um, in a nutshell, that's that's how it works. So it's taking more than three minutes, I know, but in the real world, you absolutely can deploy this in minutes. And I think what we're trying to build out here is a real a great SMB feature set without the complexity and the overheads that are required to actually get this set up for customers. Um, 
that is uh, how the chat works. So what I'm going to do now is, um, if you have any questions, um, please send them in. This chat's live on the website now. That notification was just to the agent to me saying, hey, the visitor to the website has just closed it, which was me. I just hit chat closed, which is why that came up. So I'm going to close that now. We're giving him five stars, this guy. Now we're going to get rid of that. And so what I'll do is if there's any questions, there's one question. Uh, everybody can see this, of course, so please bear that in mind when you're seeing the questions. Um, past web chats, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so any questions, please send them in, and I'm just going to um, cover a couple of these things as they come up. Um, transcripts from past web chats, absolutely. So everything gets journaled into Salesforce. That's one place you can see it. The other place as well is if you go into um, activity logs here, you've got conversations. So this is going to show the last 30 conversations. So I can just um, double click this here, and again, there it is. Uh, it's it's a basically a link and so if I was creating a new link uh, in the CRM or for whatever reason I can always just copy this link and add it in there. So this is actually how the CRM in integration works that uh, like I say I'm not actually quite set up yet on um, on Salesforce but this is how it would look. So you would have a, this link gets put in against the Salesforce record. So that's sort of one answer. The other answer is that you can find them in the report. So if I just go back to uh, the reports button here um, and if I just roll this back a second, uh, roll that back to Friday. So what I can do is I can have a look at um, conversation um, at the media stream, not detail. If I just have a look at this one here, I won't bother explaining what all of these are to be honest at the moment. Um, okay, systems web chat. Let's just have a look at that. There's a lot of reports here, but to specifically answer the question of sorry. Um, how can I see all of the web chats? These are the web chats. So these are the mandatory fields we're capturing, name, number, etc. And if I look in here, Chris Tut, let's have a look at that, or Steve Tut even. Um, so here we are. So I can actually have a look. So I could see in the report that um, you know th there was some low ratings or whatever the case may be, and I can see um, what that chat was. We've got another one. You'll see straight away that it's possible to have multiple chats. This one's unreserved. This one's coming from Bob Jones. And let's just have this. The default behavior here, I should uh, should say, is that uh, the default behavior is that you can have three web chats available, but the customer can make that one, five. You know, you can toggle that up and down. So the question was, when is email going to become available? Uh, we're expecting to have email hopefully in about in within two months. It's uh, it's almost finished. Uh, we might be able to just touch on that in the portal and just sort of show you how that how that build's coming along. Uh, so it's coming soon. Um, you'll see here now that I've got uh, I've got two web chats up. One of them's gone blank. Now the logic here is is that this first um, timer shows me the duration of the conversation, and the second one shows me if there is a second one, it shows me that the visitor to the website was the last person that made a comment in the chat. And when did they last make it? This visitor has been waiting for me for an hour, an hour, <laughs> a minute and fifteen seconds. So let's just go back in and um, uh, two months. Yep, two months. Excellent. We're going to close that now, and that's gone. See? And uh, go back to Natalie. Um, yep, that's been answered. Okay, you'll notice that closing this um, uh, this Windows close button doesn't close. You have to actually explicitly close the chat. So, okay, if there's any other questions, please um, please send them in. But uh, the other thing I would say is that we're offering um, eval licenses to anybody that wants to run this up internally. Um, so uh, but please uh, reach out to us offline. Uh, and other than that, we appreciate your time and thanks for looking at this webinar.